Hey guys, this is Kim and welcome back to Fable Stone. We are doing something epic today and that is I'm going to be unboxing all four of my new decks. So I say four, but three of those decks technically belong in the same series and that is the Spare Machine Cards and Oracle and the two expansion packs but they're sort of like separate decks as well in their own right but they're part of the same series. It is a deck that you can use to create your own tarot spreads for or oracle spreads or just spreads for card timency and it's also like a really multi-purpose deck where you can use it for journaling and tension setting you can also just use it as a straight up oracle and to do readings and stuff so we'll be unboxing spread machine the main deck and then the two expansion packs quest and change and then last but not least, my new Sparkly the Norman deck as well. It's a super adorable, doodly, cartoonish kind of adventure time plus a little magical girl sparkly type of vibe deck. <laughs> anyway, I'm so excited. So this is my first time seeing them, like just holding them in my hands. And I technically got them yesterday and then I was going to film like an unboxing or maybe go live or something. But the lighting was already bad because it was evening and I was like kind of tired because I spent all day kneading dough. I was like making buns yesterday and also just taking care of like a bunch of other miscellaneous shipping things. So I just did not have the energy. But here we are today. We are going to unbox everything. Thing. so it's gonna be like a long video so if you want to skip ahead and check out like the individual decks or whatever uh, I'm gonna leave the timestamps in the description box so you can just skip ahead but I'm going to be unboxing everything in this video so it's probably gonna be it's gonna be a while but it's gonna be a very fun ride and I'm so excited okay and this is also the first time I'm doing a dual screen and I'm also filming with my new camera and it was kind of like overheating the last time I did an unboxing so I'm still learning the temperament of this camera so just bear with me if there is a if anything happens but here we go let me just press the recording on, on the other camera okay so now you can see my face and what's going on on my desk all right so oh my god here are my decks um, we got the spare machine oracle cards and oracle so there's been um if you've been following my kickstarter updates there's been sort of like there's been some changes uh done to the overall color scheme and the font designs because of some technical issues um you know like originally it was more pastel it was like um uh, the, uh, the color is a little lighter and then it's like kind of like light uh it's like a lot of like pink and orange and green but the white font just doesn't go against that really well it just it just wouldn't print really well so I have to change up the entire color scheme and I have to kind of uh revamp the font as well because a couple of people reached out to me and they're like we can't I don't know like it's a little unreadable so I had to adjust and then just make sure that it becomes it's Beck's best deck self like Pokemon evolving into like the next best version so here we have the spread machine cards and oracle Created by Kimberly Anton, yours truly. So that is me. And there's a red dot. That is not a sniper rifle. That is just my camera, like the recording light. So just ignore that. Um, <laughs> oh my god, it's actually like it, it's just it's just there. Anyway, all right. So that's the back. Um, also, um, if you want to like not spoil yourself and you want it to be this a surprise when you get the pledge. Uh, when you get a package um, in from Kickstarter, oh my god, that red dot is actually a little distracting. But anyway, so just letting you know that, well, obviously I'm going to be unboxing everything. I'm going to be looking at everything. So if you don't want to be spoiled, if you want it to be a surprise, don't watch this video or just as or just watch as much as you want. So obviously, yeah, um, just just so you know. So we managed to upgrade to a beautiful uh, magnetic uh, clasp box. I don't know why. Uh, even on my campaign, I kept saying metallic clasp box. I wonder if some people just kind of thought that it was like this tin box or something, but it's actually a magnetic clasp box where you can kind of open it from the side and then there's like a little magnet that holds it in place. So that's what I meant. i um, very sorry that was misleading. I don't know what I was like thinking, <laughs> but anyway, so that's the main deck. And then we have the two expansion packs over here. They're in tuck boxes, but they're printed in like... I think it was 400 GSM paper, so it's like a little thicker or just as thick as the cards themselves. So they're definitely not like super thin, flimsy um, tuck boxes. They're really sturdy. And we also, through stretch goals, managed to unlock the embossing and also the spot UV treatment. So you get like a little textural sort of 
you know, it's like a little, little, like you can, you can, you, like it's like a little, like off, like, you know, like a little, like it's like a little elevated. So, you know, it's like, it feels really nice uh, when you run your fingers through them. That's what I meant. Okay. And that is the back. Oh my God. WJ um, playing cards did an amazing, phenomenal job. And this is my sparkly Learn Roman. So I accidentally completed the set uh, when I was sort of working through Strat Machine. I needed to let off some steam uh, because of all the logistics stuff. So I was just kind of drawing and then just kind of ended up finishing the stack. So I printed it with Strat Machine and that is, um, that's the people stand Panda logo. Okay. I'm so excited. Which one should we start with? Okay. Let's just do Strat Machine because, oh my God, I've been working on this for so long and it's just so much troubleshooting, so many challenges that came up along the way. And, um, it was just so many times it was just very, very frustrating, but, um, I'm just so grateful for all of you guys' patience because I was just like pulling my hair out because I was like, oh my God, I need to push back the deadline. I really don't want to delay this, but I needed to kind of finish everything and also just like make sure that the quality is good. And as a recovering perfectionist, uh, just relaxing was kind of hard, but I'm so glad that. I have the finished product. I was like really nervous when I got it yesterday because I was like, oh my god, what if it's terrible? <laughs> anyway, oh my god. So, something that I did differently from Way of the Panda Tarot is I got silk velvet, silky matte finish, uh, silky matte lamination. So, it's not just matte lamination, it's silky matte lamination. So, it feels like leathery you know it feels like just an upgraded version of what i used to have and here's the spray machine and you can see like i don't know if you can catch like a little glisten um like there we go so there's like spa uv treatment on the letters and on these designs and oh my god it feels so nice in my hands Ooh, okay i'm so excited all right oh look at that so that's the guidebook and we have the inner pages I'm really proud of those inner pages. You know, I, I just like, this is my first time designing like a magnetic clasp box. And I was like, I don't know what to do. And it took so, so much troubleshooting, so much researching to finally sort of finalize, to finally finalize the design, to finalize the design. So yeah, that's the Fable Dance logo, my favorite panda. And that says Fueled by Passion, Caffeine and Tapioca Pearls. Kim and her team of dedicated crafts pandas set out to create the ultimate tool for spare crafting and personal growth and so spare machine was born visit him and the pandas that's fable stand at fablestand.com please bring snacks to appease the pandas they get feisty when i'm fed so that's kind of like a little joke um <laughs> like a little running joke for fable stand i like to kind of bring pandas into the picture my website is panda infested everything is infested by panda so spare machine even though it wasn't panda themed you got it there's there's gonna be some pandas in there okay so and there we go that's oh my god this is the guidebook oh it's thinner than i anticipated that's really cool i thought it was going to be thicker but but it's actually not it's actually not that bad i, I would literally thought it was going to be like this thick but it might be because of the paper so the paper got an upgrade as well compared to the way of way of the panda guidebooks and this was also unlocked through stretch goals this is just this amazing you know it has matte lamination on it so it's like slicker and it's like you know, it'll last longer, and um, I think the only downside is that you can't really write down on it, like with pencil, but if you write with a pen or a gel pen, then it's fine. That's the guidebook, and that is the cover. Oh my god, I'm so excited. So, okay, let's see. Spread crafting deck for spiritual card slingers and truth seekers. Ooh, table of contents. I have this, like, terrible anxiety of getting, like, the uh, page numbers wrong, but I triple checked, so... It should be fine, but it's also printed, so there's nothing I can do now. So I'm pretty sure everything is good. So yeah, this guidebook, oh my god. <laughs> um, I went through so much trouble with this guidebook. <laughs> like I thought I wrote a draft before the Kickstarter campaign and then I lost it or I thought I lost it, and I couldn't find it. And I needed to rewrite the whole thing and that was just, just stressing me out. Just stress was through the roof that day when I found out. But um, eventually I found the draft and then I kind of like added extra sec sections and exercises and a lot of additional content because we were so close to the workbook. So I decided that I would just beef up the guidebook. So kind of just add a little extra in there um, that wasn't there before. So this is the final product. So this um, doesn't really have like 
explanations for each card, but this is really like a mini guidebook for creating spreads. So it really walks you through from like the beginning to end of spread crafting. This is kind of like the condensed sort of uh, Cole's notes um, summary version of my course Tarot Spread Machine. So it really gives you all the everything that you need to kind of create a spread for yourself. Right, and talks about why creating spread is really fun and also like the deeper meaning of creating spreads if you never thought of it before. So it walks you through the different parts of the deck, how it's sectioned, you know, there's like the different categories and how you can use different categories um, and tells you like what, what colors they are. Um, this is really, this is really amazing. Like, oh my god. Woo! Okay, so this is kind of like giving you an idea like what this deck can be used for. And oh, the print quality is so good. Oh my god, I'm never using like just regular book paper now. I need to use... Look at this paper! It's so good. Okay, actual activities you can use this deck for. So this is kind of just like overall thematic things that you can use for this deck. And this is sort of like actual activities for this deck, like spread crafting. Um, using it as oracle cards, a tool for, of magic, rituals and prayer, intention setting, all that jazz. So this is just kind of like a little guide to ask you to like follow your heart and not be so kind of restricted by the steps in this book. It's like the, the things that are outlined in this book are kind of just guidelines and kind of just give you ideas about like what are the things you can consider instead of like you need to follow this to a T. You know, I'm really big on creative freedom. So this is really just like a blueprint and you are the designer and the crafter and the architect. You can use it however way, uh, however you want and whatever way you want. So that's kind of just like a little premise for the stack, um, just to kind of walk you into the themes and really enrich you, you know, with this experience. And then we got like the actual spec creation. So this is kind of just walking you through like the steps of spec creation, right? Coming up with the goal, figuring out the positions and things like that. So there's like four. So if you took my, if you have taken my Terra Spray Machine course, you'll probably recognize some of these diagrams because like I said, it's sort of like a condensed um, minimal version of it. Um, I think most of you got the full throttle bundle, so you will also have access to this course. And if you want to enroll in this course, I'm figuring out some stuff with Teachable because like, um, it's like the, the, the plants, kind of the features of Swish, and I'm sort of deciding which one I want to go for. So I'm still troubleshooting that. I'm still sorting that out, but the courses will be available. So if you're not, if you're unable to enroll right now, then, um, don't worry. It's, it's, um, it's coming. It is coming. Okay, so yeah, these are just like really like tips and considerations that, you know, that are just to like help you with spread. Anyway, I'm talking too much about the guidebook. Okay, I'm really proud of this guidebook, okay? Um, okay, so you, I, I guess you can just see for yourself and there's like lots of hacks and tips. And then of course I have activities. It's sort of like the added section. Um, different activities that you can just jumpstart your journey with the deck. Like, I can't, I can barely speak. I'm so excited. So there's like different activities and each activity kind of helps you tap into a different function of the deck, like Oracle and Spare Machine. And then there's like some sample spreads here to get you started. Oh my God, the print quality is so good. And then there's some spread prompts. If you don't know where to start, like there's some spreads that you can just, you know, get started with and stuff. Oh my god, this is this is amazing. I honestly thought this was gonna be thicker, but it's actually not so bad. Okay, so don't worry, the deck is not blank. I included a bonus card so you could kind of just write whatever spread prompt on it. So that is the inside of the deck. Oh, it is so pretty. Holy shit. I'm so proud of myself. Damn proud of the work I've done. And my nose is like sniffly and oh shit! Ah! Uh-oh. Oh my god. <laughs> that did not just happen! <laughs> oh my god, it's so recording. Okay, please don't break this. 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 Oh, okay. That was um a disaster, but I'm so excited though. Okay, okay, okay. This is this will work. Let me just. I'm so excited, sorry. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm like sitting in this precarious like position with my tripod. Like it's literally like, <laughs> it's literally like in between my legs right now, like like this. <laughs> Cause I'm trying to like uh, do like an overhead, but also like, you know, um, film this like, okay, I need to, I need to readjust this. Pardon me, pardon me. 
Um. Okay. Oh my god. All right. All right. This will work. This will work. Okay. Sorry for that intrusion. Um. I'm clumsy AF as usual, but here we go. Um, nothing happened. It's still recording. So, oh my God. Okay. So that's the box and I'm really proud of it. <sighs> okay. Let me just calm down for a second. All right. So that is the deck and look at that amazing, gorgeous sort of pinkish purple, um, lavender edge. Originally it was going to be a rose quartz edge, but since we darkened the overall color scheme, I decided to kind of just darken it like bring it down a shade and bring it closer to purple. So um, this is still really like a gorgeous like lavender. I think it's lavender now or like lilac. So I think originally it was like a little more pinkish, but the printer told me that when it was too pink, it was, um, there were some technical issues because the color was too light to cover the, like the, the, the design, like from the, from the deck so anyway so i hope you still like this color i'm really in love with it like it's like this sort of cosmic purple it's mad oh my god okay look at the back holy shit like oh my god this is so amazing um oh interesting Feels a little different. Is it 350 GSM? Because okay, so let me just check. Because Panda was 350 GSM. Yeah, it feels about the same. Anyway, I wonder if because there's less ink on it, like it feels a little different. But anyway, okay, so this is the back, and um, so it's like this original sort of ombre design, but just kind of um, galaxy thing. Oh, you can see the butt of my camera <laughs> okay so there is 88 cards in total so there's 86 cards um that's actually part of the deck but you get like one bonus um blank card so you can use this to write your own spread prompt and then you get a quick start guide so just to kind of if you don't want to read the guidebook and you're just like you want a quick reference and everything and um let me just puff on my hoodie so i look like a marshmallow okay so this is like a quick start guide. So it kind of just walks you through all the different categories really fast. If you want like a quick view and, um, and this is the actual deck. Oh my God. <laughs> this is, this hour is going to be like an hour long. So maybe I'll do part one and part two. Um, part one is like the main deck and then part two is like the expansion pack and the sparkly Lenormand, or maybe I'll separate them. I don't know. We shall see. Okay, so we have the Seeker card. So this is like the first category. Um, and the cup and the oh my god, it's, oh, it's so good. It looks so good. Oh my god. So the first category is the Seeker. So it has to do with like your character and your person, everything that is sort of like you know, kind of like the core cards of Tarot, right? So we have Seeker, right? We have the title, like the spread prompt. And then we have like a little sort of guiding, like some sometimes it's like guiding questions or it will just explain what a category is. Basically just like more prompts to help you utilize the spread prompt and this concept. So Seeker uses this card to represent you, who you are, what you may be thinking, feeling, and how you're positioned in a situation or relationship right now. So, and then we have intention, what you aim to achieve, what you seek to manifest in life, and what you commit to carrying out in the future. Oh my God, it looks so good. I was really afraid that the printing wouldn't capture like the really subtle parts of the card. Um, but everything is there, like all the sparkles are there, the galaxy stars are there. I'm really happy with it. Motivation, and then it gives you like a little... I'm not going to read every single card because that is just going to take like forever, but... I'm really happy with how this turned out. I'm really happy with the font. That is actually my calligraphy. I'll turn into a font um, using Calligrapher. It's like this website that turns your calligraphy into a font so uh, i recommend using it if you want to like streamline your font but you don't like if you don't, if you don't want to do calligraphy for every single card and you can just turn into a font like this and it's much easier to work with and do typesetting and etc oh my god this is one of my favorite ombres like i really love sort of like three colors or four colors stacked on top of each other and then it's just kind of being blended into like like this like with a brush and for those of you who might who might be wondering, I did, I I created um, 
spray machine nano 2 expansion pack that did everything on procreate uh, well i did the art in the background in procreate and then i used uh, affinity publisher to do the typesetting because it has alignment and has like more text options so relationship oh my god so awesome it looks so good oh it looks so different from like when it was on the screen of course which is like a given but so this is the second category and everything is like pink and purplish um oh my god i'm so oh, i'm so happy with this okay focus areas um so these are kind of just like focus areas that you can use to kind of examine the different areas of your life you can use this consciously you can pick them out you can be like okay i want to you know explore say trauma and healing a deep dive you can put that in the center of the spread you can use it to modify like a given spare position you can also just like i don't know what to work on today i'm just gonna shuffle and let the universe decide so what should i it's like i don't know like what do i need to make a spread for like what is the theme on my spread today and you can just like use this category and then you can make one for spirituality, metaphysics, and philosophy, and things like that. So a lot, very, very versatile, this deck. Like, you can use it for a lot of things. So uh, so these are just different categories. So you got spiritually, uh, spirituality, metaphysics, philosophy, selfhood, introspection, identity. So I kind of chose three keywords to sort of capture the overall theme of that category. So it's not just like one word. It's like three words. Um, connection relationship and love we got family parenting and children i think we honestly need more parenting deck and family themed decks i know like um like i think i feel like in western culture um in north america family is sort of like <laughs> i don't know like i just feel like in spiritual circles we don't really talk about it like we talk a lot about personal development and cultivation of self but rarely in the context of family so that's why i decided to include that card family is very important to me i'm sure it's very important for many of us but i just okay i just feel like in tarot sphere we don't see a lot of spreads or resources for like exploring your say your family dynamics or relationship with your parent or your children etc you know like you know what i mean like am i making sense Okay, and of course we got finances, money, abundance. Another nightmare of mine is making, like, having a typo on the card. Like, that's just, like, that's gonna, like, kill me. Trauma, healing, deep dive. So hopefully I don't spot any because that will really just, like, destroy me. Okay, let me just change it up. That will not destroy me. It'll just be a minor inconvenience. I don't want to, like, you know, over-dramatize um, that. Academia, learning, education. So this is for, like, if you're a student or you're learning something, if you are doing some personal development, uh, enrolling in a course to develop your business or something, so it falls under this category. A karma, past life, cycles, community, society, environment. So this is kind of, like, the context of your existence, what's around you, your culture, etc. Oh, maybe I should have included that word, culture. Um, but anyway, career, work, business, dreams, true calling, vision, goals, productivity, habit, uh, wellness, health, and self-care, ancestry, generations, and DNA. We got joy, peace, and fun. Oh my god, like all the little specs are there. I was really scared that it's gonna, it's not gonna be as like, you know, like it's not gonna capture all the nuances, but oh my god, like WJ did a spectacular job with this. I'm so pleased and I'm so happy. Okay, so next category we have light work. So the entire light work category is galaxy theme. So you can see like the blue and the turquoise and the purple and sometimes a little bit of pink, um, you know, on the self love card. So this category is basically a category for healing, for expansion, for love, and for trust. So this is this is the love and light category, right? Because it's called light work, and then it's balanced by the shadow work category where we want to explore some of the heavier stuff, our the things we repressed, and the things we, the trauma that we're still healing from, the, the limiting beliefs, etc. So we have like, you know, the light and the dark. But this is like all love and light. Um, Self-care, very important. Self-love. This is one of my favorite cards as well. Like, look at the color. Like, oh my God, compassion. We have gratitude, generosity, and luck. So this is one of the cards that have like a guiding question. So what opportunities and joyful surprise are in store for you? What can you do to align yourself to the energies of luck? So obviously this is a deck for like, um, it's like a person-centered deck. Like it really focuses on your power and your development and your growth and your thoughts, your emotions, your uh, psychological landscape, etc. 
So it really focuses on how you could align yourself with your like higher self, with your purpose, with love, with with healing, etc. So it's all about you and, and just like empowering you. Um, and that is the mission of the stack. And I'm, I'm so proud of it. Like, oh my God, synchronicity, courage, potential. And this, there's like um, guiding questions as well. Affirmation, victory, purpose, truth. Oh my God. It's all blue, like the throat chakra. Prayer and God universe. I'm so glad this galaxy is like easily... Um, you can still see it. I was like, one of my concerns was like, this all of this is gonna be gone because I printed a test deck using uh, Printer Studio, but obviously it's like a cheaper one object. It's not like professional industrial printer. I mean, I'm sure it's a professional printer, but it just quality was less. This is obviously like much better. Got triggers. So this is a shadow work category. Like I said, this is to like explore, um, you know, the dark shadow scapes within their soul. Really, if you want to dive into your psyche and um, <clears throat> and just like really come face to face with the darker aspects of yourself that you don't want to face, that you um, don't want to look at, this is the category to go to. And it's sort of like the dark nebula theme. It's galaxy, but it's darker. You know, it's like the kind of like black hole-ish, I guess. I mean, I guess black hole is just black, but dark galaxy, if you know what I mean. So we got triggers. And then we got projection, limiting beliefs, and problematic behavior. So obviously, like, all of this can be combined with other cards. Like, let's say you want to explore your limiting beliefs, and then you can actually go to the focus areas category and just be like, in which area do I have, like, a limiting belief? And you can just randomly pick a card. Let's say you pick karma, past life, and cycles. So you can actually explore that. And you can combine with a tarot deck or an oracle deck and just really really just honing on those themes like i'm i'm like kind of teary eyed talking about this because that was the original purpose and intention for this deck is that it's so incredibly flexible you can really use it to combine different concepts and really use it as a tool for personal development like oh i'm just like getting shivers like joyful shivers from talking about this Okay, so obviously we have our limiting beliefs, like there's just so many different ways of combining the different topics and the spectrums of the stack. Like I'm really excited to see what people come up with. Um, problematic behavior. I think the initial joy is coming back. You know, like this project, it's just so many twists and turns. I had to troubleshoot so much and there's so many challenges, but seeing the deck in my hand, like just holding it and flipping through it right now, everything is freaking worth it. Like... Just like, I remember why I created it. <laughs> I remember why I created the stack. The initial spark is coming back. It's full circle. Okay, anyway, repression. We got ego, fear. Originally, like, the shadow, um, the shadow work category actually had more design. Like, fear originally was, like, a, sort of, like, a cloud of darkness, and there's, like, a face in it. It looks super spooky, but it was just really hard to have the designs interact with the text and have the text still be visible, so I actually had to get rid of it. Um, I've rid of a lot of it, unfortunately, and kind of have this more sort of, um, like, uh, like the, this kind of background where it's, like, easy for the text to show. So this is one of the reasons why some of the things got simplified and then some of the designs got, are, are gone because I know they look really good on a campaign page and then some of you might be like, oh, I missed some of the designs. But when you really enlarge it and take a closer look and have it interact with the text, it really didn't look good. Like it, it, you can barely read the text and it looks like chaotic and and it just, it just wasn't good. So I had to like change it. And that was one of the lessons that I've learned because this is the first time me like just creating something digitally and then having to have it go to print. And that was like a big hurdle <sighs> because in a way of the Panatera, I worked with an artist. So the work was kind of divided and it was also like a different experience because it was a tarot deck. Anyway, enough of that. So wound, yes, that was one of my wounds. Just like, <laughs> oh my God, you will not believe the stress I went through but everything is so worth it now I was like so scared I was like so close to giving up like there was this one like w one point I was like I'm just gonna refund everyone and just like fuck this project but I'm so glad I persevered because I mean there was no way I was gonna give it up like I was not gonna give up on this project because I started it it's my creation it's my baby but just I was mentally there. I was like so close. I was just like, why don't I just fucking refund everybody because this is too hard. But I'm so glad I stuck with it. 
And like I said, there was just no way that I was gonna give up on this product. So I, I finished when I started, even though I'm a fire sign in Aries. But once I launch something, it's on Kickstarter, people pay for it, there's no way I was gonna quit. So everything's worth it, oh my God. Subconscious, and we got excuse. So this category is really hard hitting. Like, yeah, we all want, you have nowhere to hide with this category. Look at these prompts. Excuse, sabotage. It's like victimhood. It'll call you out as it, it'll like it'll call you out on your bullshit. So just letting you know. Responsibility, and we got upbringing and karma. So then, yeah, so that's the shadow work category. And then we have the boundary category, and it's all like dark indigo. And I know like it's a little sort of close to the shadow work category and I kind of wanted this category to, to be like transitioning out like in terms of color because oftentimes when we're doing shadow work um there's also like a lot of boundary work I think especially if you're someone who's very empathic if you're someone who's very sensitive and tends to fall into passivity and peacemaking when it comes to like speaking your truth etc so a lot of shadow work is about boundary setting so obviously you might have a different experience and journey but yeah boundary is sort of like I mean, if your shadow kind of causes you to go towards the aggressive side, boundary is also something that you can work on or that I, I, I would assume that you find yourself kind of constantly be confronted by because um, if you're like, you know, if you're sort of like the opposite end of the journey, it would be more like you're trying to not cross other people's boundary and not be a dick. So boundary, I feel like is a good transition category um, from shadow work into like some of the other like call to action cards. So. Speaking of call to action cards, the rest of this is all call to action cards. So they're all like carefully chosen verbs or action words that you can use to kind of create for momentum in your life. So I really wanted them to be verbs instead of nouns because verbs are action words and they really sort of just push you forward and motivate you to do something to change your life, to change yourself. So we got boundary, express, we got disengage, and we got confront assert compromise and oh okay and compromise so i think it's just like five cards six cards in there yeah we got five cards from from boundary so it's like a smaller category but i feel like it needed to be there okay so we got the success category so this category from call to it's like a subcategory from call to action is particularly about like um what's it called like productivity leadership and putting yourself out there and and you know getting shit done and a hustle this category is all about the hustle so we got solve we got adjust and this is also like a good problem solving category like if you're like working on a project if you're facing a challenge and you really need some practical measures to kind of push your life forward this is a category you can, you can go to and it's a success category so we got solve adjust right lots of problem solving words practice navigate commit conquer innovate lead and we have guide and then we have support so the color scheme for this category is like just shades of blue like skies you know i think this entire category like from the call to action they're all sort of shades of sky like this is like dark indigo right? nighttime right um, and this is like sort of like bright morning sky it's all like sky blue there's a bit of teal and turquoise so that's a success category. And then we got expansion. So I went with purple. So it's kind of like adjacent to the galaxy colors, but it's mostly purple. So obviously purple is the color of the crown chakra. It's very fitting for the expansion category. Oh my God, look at these starry, starry speckles. Okay, we got purge. We got release. So this is kind of also very close to the light work category because like they're like actions that you can do to heal, to release, to purge. Basically all the all the verbs in this category, right? We got forgive. We have surrender. And we have align. Heal. Balance. Oh, the colors turn off so well. Attract. Manifest. This is one of my favorite cards. Look at this. Look at these clouds. And we have love to show tenderness and devotion to care to connect to take something as part of yourself to be one with all I'm really proud of that little right up there okay so the last last but not least we have processing so this is anything that has to do with processing information examining information wait i just said that examining your worldview and perspectives etc so it's kind of like figuring things out very to a source energy we have reframe and we have define explore 
accept and integrate. So originally it had a listening card, but I think I had an extra card somewhere and it didn't fit the number of cards that we were going to print. So I decided to take it out because um, I think there were some similar, um, I think there were some similar concepts just throughout the deck and also we have a listening card in change. Um, in the stack, so I decided to take it out. Originally, I wanted to repeat because listening is very important, you know. Um, I just need more listening in general in the world, so... But yeah, I decided to take that card out because, um, you know, the number of cards wasn't great and it was gonna give my printer like a hell of a headache because the way printing works is that you can't just randomly add on a card. It's like they print in rows, right? If you add a card, it's gonna be an extra row and they have to change the entire layout. So it was like a big trouble. So I decided to take one card out to kind of prevent technical difficulties and just to kind of make, sh make things, make the production a little smoother. So the processing um, category is, is green. Um, just intuitively, I feel that's a good, like, education, like, information processing color. I don't know why, I just feel like it's, like, kind of, like, reminds me of a classroom for some reason. And again, it's that gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous purple. You can, you can see a little bit of the, the back just, like, shining through, but I kind of like that. kind of looks like it's glowing. Alright, so that is the, um, spare machine cards in Oracle. I am just, oh my god, I'm in love. With it, and I want to make another video where I do readings and kind of just show maybe people how you can use the stack. Maybe try to do it before the decks come out, uh, go out, and then get get shipped out, so people can have like a reference if you want to like if they want. Just just create some resources for people, right? So that's the kind of oh my, I'm in love with this paper. Look at this, holy shit. Okay, and that satisfying click. All right, so that is the spread machine cards and oracle. Oh my god, I'm so proud of it. Honestly, I was so nervous about this deck because it was my first time doing a lot of things such as like designing this kind of box. There's just so many different aspects and I was so scared of getting like the size wrong because um, you have to figure out this side and that side and, and all the, you have to make sure the colors fit together. I was just like super anal with my printer. I was like, is there a way to look at the box and can I see the sample? Can I see the colors and everything? But oh my god, so. Here we are, I'm super proud of this deck, and I am going to unbox the expansion packs. I think I'm going to start a new video clip so this doesn't get too long, but so this is part one um, of unboxing all my decks. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for watching, like and subscribe, and go check out part two um, if you want to see the expansion packs and the Sparkly Lord Norman, so, but I'll just pause it and just stop the video here. Alright, see you very soon.